The world of Bible study has changed enormously with the advent of this extraordinary media of YouTube. And the difficult thing for the public is to discern who is telling the truth and who isn't. I have a recommendation here. Do not assume that because somebody says a given Hebrew word means such and such, they know what they're talking about. They may not. You have to be very skeptical. Let me give you an example. There are sites out there assuring us that the word echad in Hebrew, one, really means more than one. It's hard for me to be polite about that sort of opinion. This is really awfully bad. All you need to do is to ask any person who knows the Hebrew language. I studied Hebrew in the University of Jerusalem many years back. This is a very easy point. The word echad in Hebrew means one, a mathematical one. You can look at it 972 times, I think, in the Old Testament. It means one and not two. Any child knows that when you count, you've got echad, two, three, one. Mathematical one. But out there, there are some extraordinary arguments. I, I'm being polite here. I mean, they're worse than awful. Telling you that one is really more than one, because after all, in a day, one day, you have 24 hours. Or you have an evening and a morning. You see there, one therefore means more than one because you've got an evening and a morning. Let's try that one then as follows. Go to the dollar store and you buy an item for one dollar and you go to pay for it and the cashier says, no, actually this is going to be a hundred dollars because you see one really means a hundred because after all there are a hundred pennies in one dollar. So therefore one must mean, must mean compound one. This is frightfully bad but it takes people in. No, one means one and not two, one and not more. One means unique. Echad is a very easy word. Abraham was one person, we read in Ezekiel 34, one single person. Now this is not small matter because when Jesus was asked by a friendly scribe about the greatest of all the commandments, he replied with complete clarity. You see, Jesus wasn't a trickster. He wasn't playing games with words. He said to this friendly Jew, let me tell you what the greatest of all the commandments is. It's the Deuteronomy 6, 4, the famous Shema, the Creed of Israel, the affirmation of the center of all sound faith. Listen, Israel, that's a command. Listen, pay attention. The Lord our God is one Lord, is a perfectly good way to translate that. Kyrios o theosimon, kyrios isestin. I'm giving you the modern Greek pronunciation because that's the way we teach our Greek in the Bible college where I worked and still work some. So listen, Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Now, how many Lords is that? Well, one. And what does one mean? It means one. It doesn't mean two or three Lords. Now, here's where the problems really arise. People think, yes, I believe in one Yahweh, but that Yahweh is really three. One is not three and never will be three. Every Jew knew that. Judaism has always known it. It's a very easy matter. And recently, Professor Barkham of uh, Great Britain was kind enough to uh, reassure us that when a Jew said that the Lord God is one, he meant one person, one single person. The Jews certainly meant that. Jews were unitary monotheists, they weren't Trinitarians. Jesus cannot have been a Trinitarian. He agreed wholeheartedly on the greatest of all the commandments. Now that's a very significant fact, because we are Christians are pledged to believing in the teachings of Jesus. The New Testament warns us on page after page that if we don't listen to what Jesus says, we're in terribly bad trouble. So, would you try starting then with this extraordinary discussion between the Jew and Jesus and figure out once and for all that God is one Yahweh, one person, the Father, not two, not three. There's no such thing as compound one. The word one in English and in Hebrew could modify any noun in the universe. Think about that. One universe, one nose, one lamb, one fish, one person. The semantic value of the word one, I'm sorry to be even so technical, there is no need to be so technical, but the meaning of that word one, ask your children of two or three or four, is simply one. The meaning of one has not changed in one family. Still one family, not two families. One trio doesn't mean that one means three. That is a very tricky piece of verbal gymnastics and it's misleading a lot of people. So I would advise you, first of all, to get straight and then to tell your friends about that. And agree with Jesus in Mark 12, 29, where he reasserts the very easy creed of Israel that God is a single person.